Welcome back. A reminder, we're waiting to hear from the President of the United States, and we'll listen in when he takes the stage at the Building Trades Labor Meeting here in the nation's capital. First, though, what is a good spy drama without shadowy characters, secret meetings, and passing sensitive documents? No, not a Tom Clancy novel or the latest installment of James Bond or Jason Bourne. Just another day in the investigation of Russia's election middling. Let's look now at new developments relating to three people certain to be on the witness list as the House and the Senate Intelligence Committee advance their investigations. Carter Page, Eric Prince, and Susan Rice. Those investigations going forward. Some new developments here. Carter Page, he was already of interest because of election year trips to Russia while he was listed as an advisor to the Trump campaign. Now, after a report by BuzzFeed, Page confirms he met a few years ago with a Russian intelligence agent in New York, that agent posing as a banker. Page says he gave this Russian agent his business card and some non-sensitive, he says, documents about energy issues. The federal complaint against that agent said the Russians were trying to recruit mail number one. That's how it's listed in the complaint. Page now confirms that's him to become a Russian spy. Um, you can't make this stuff up. Um, you just can't make this stuff up. Or maybe Tom Clancy can make this stuff up. Page says he did nothing wrong. Page says he met with this guy. This was a couple of years ago. It has nothing to do with Donald Trump. He wasn't running for president. Uh, if you read the court documents, they, were, they, they allege this Russian agent was trying to recruit spies here in the United States, and Page was one of them. Um, it's a great spy novel. It's great theater. It's great drama. What does it have to do, if anything, of relevance to these investigations now? Well, the ties with Trump, I think, are, are what needs to be explored a little bit. We know Trump, in a Washington Post uh, editorial board meeting, said Page was one of his advisors on foreign policy. So what happened after that? You know, sort of how close was Page with Trump? Uh, this seems to solidify the ties between Page and, and Russians. You know, he had interactions so deep that they were recruiting him to be a spy for Russia. So, I mean, th those ties appear deep, but right. what is the relevance with Trump and currently? It, add, it adds to the, the need to look at those campaign timing trips to Russia, obviously. Um, and another thing is every time these guys come out and say, I have no contacts, and they end up having to edit it. Oh, some contacts. Well, I never actually spoke to them. Nah, actually spoke to them. Didn't actually meet with them. Eh, met with them. And so this is not the last you're here. you've heard of this. You're, you'll hear of this Carter Page, uh, these Carter Page meetings. Um, yeah. And as, as officials go through the, the, the campaign timing meetings with Russians, they're going to be looking at that extremely closely. I had a senior uh, administration official say to me a couple of weeks ago that the Russia story for them is death by a thousand cuts. This is probably one of the deepest, though, because the notion that Carter Page, okay, he may or may not have been really close with the campaign, huh. really known the president. You know, we, we don't know. The they fact used, that the president they used himself, his name when they needed to. They used to. his name when they didn't have anybody right. else who would right. vouch for the president. They put it on the letterhead and on the advisory committee. That happens a lot. We, you know, we, we understand right. that all covering campaigns. But the notion that this guy, who was on the letterhead, who the president did tell the Washington Post right. that he is an advisor, was actually recruited to potentially be a Russian spy. What? I mean, it, it, if this was just in a vacuum, it would be, wow. The what? fact that it's up against all the other questions about the president's what? ties or alleged ties to Russia. It only part and, way and, matters right. that he may have had no idea right. and that none of the, these Trump officials may have had an idea of how they were right. being viewed as pawns. What matters was if the Russians were viewing some of these folks close to Donald Trump as pawns. Right. And that is added, exactly. uh, and that right. is added exactly right. atop the fact that this is an administration right. whose calling card was that they were not government insiders. They don't have bureaucratic experience. Business experience is right. really what matters. And added atop the fact that uh, Trump's posture during the campaign was you know, we can maybe have a different kind of relationship with Russia and add it atop kind of the, the WikiLeaks, uh, the hacking, all of this stuff. When you put it all together, um, many of that campaign's own postures uh, have right. put them in this position now where in, until we go through this, these right. questions are going to hang uh, over. And, and until we go through this part, even if there's nothing there, we're on day 75, we're still learning new things about connections and contacts and meetings that are, whether, however they turn out, are of interest to the investigators, which means at a week, at a month, at a week, at a month, to this goes on. And it's a cloud over the president. Meeting number two that we want to talk about plot twist today, the Washington Post reporting on Eric Prince, uh, the CEO of Blackwater. If you remember back to the Iraq War days and the Afghanistan War days, Blackwater was a private security firm, mostly ex-military people got in a lot of trouble uh, for some deaths on its watch over there Eric Prince was the CEO he was also a Trump donor and he visited the Trump Tower which a lot of supporters did during the transition absolutely nothing wrong with that the Washington Post says the United Arab Emirates arranged a secret meeting in January between Blackwater founder Eric Prince and a Russian close to Vladimir Putin as part of an apparent effort to establish a back channel line of communication between Moscow and president-elect Donald Trump according to US European and Arab 
officials. This meeting took place on January 11th in the Seychelles, uh, nine days before the Trump inauguration and a little bit of time after the first public report about the investigations into Russia election meddling. What do we make of and this? And not, not flagged for the State Department, if I remember the, the, that part yeah, of the right. article as well. That's what really adds flavor here is that they were doing this. It was a real back channel. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't just sort of quiet outreach and negotiations. Right. The Emiratis are viewed as an ally by the State Department. You usually give a heads up if you're coming to the United States to have meetings, which they had some meetings at Trump Tower before this meeting in the Seychelles. And so people again say, why all the hush hush? And think about the timing of this, too. I mean, you, you had the, the controversy over Russia with Trump. It was sort of boiling at that point. You knew the WikiLeaks stuff. You knew the Obama administration was sort of taking actions to, to go after Russia and, and uh, sort of penalize them for some of those things. And yet the Trump administration incoming was still sort of doing this back-channel stuff, right. you know, trying to subvert. Now, Eric, Eric, back door, now, now Eric, Eric Prince says this was business and has nothing to do with any of this Trump stuff. Okay. 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 By the way, you forgot to mention that his sister happens yeah. to be in the Trump cabinet. His sister in the Trump cabinet. <laughs> and, and so let, let's turn to character twist number three today, uh, which is the one that Republicans want to talk about. Um, the Repub we've had a lot of conversations over the past week or ten days, and we've confused all of you watching out in the real America about so-called unmasking. Devin Nunes, the House Intelligence Committee, going down to the White House to see some documents, getting help seeing those documents from administration officials, then going home to sleep, and then coming back to brief the President of the United States about the documents shown to him by administration <laughs> officials. I know I've confused you. But now we're hearing there was a report first by Bloomberg yesterday and then some other reporting that one of the allegations is that Susan Rice, the national security advisor to President Obama, saw some intelligence reporting during the transition period. In it were mentioned unnamed, uh, these are perfectly legal surveillance of foreign interests, and in there were mentioned some conversations with Trump transition officials, and she asked the question, who are these people? Who are these people? First, I want to show you this. This is Susan Rice a short time ago on the PBS NewsHour with Judy Woodruff. When asked at first, her name was not involved in the conversation at this point, when asked at first, the House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin Nunes says there was unmasking done by Obama administration officials. I know nothing about this. I was surprised to see uh, reports from uh, Chairman Yunus on that uh, count today. Uh, I really don't know to what uh, Chairman Nunes was referring, but he said that whatever he was referring to was a, a legal, lawful uh, surveillance and that it was potentially incidental collection right. on American citizens. Uh, remember the beginning of that. I know nothing about this. This is the same Susan Rice moments ago on MSNBC. There were occasions when I would receive a report in which uh, a U.S. person was referred to. Name not provided, just U.S. person. And sometimes in that context, in order to understand the importance of the report and assess its significance, it was necessary to find out or request the information as to who that U.S. official was. Um, not to be a jerk here, but will the real Susan Rice please stand up? <laughs> yeah, the second part of that, the, the, the oh. one on MSNBC, is a perfectly logical explanation of how unmasking right. works. The problem is it, it, the previous comment in which she denies any knowledge of it. So she right. can't, um, she can't, in the same breath. Right. So Welcome no to idea. the witness list. Yeah, I mean, come on. Um, but, but now, now, again, she goes on to say, she goes on to say, actually, let's, let's play a little bit more of the interview she just did on MSNBC where she says, yes, this was my job. Granted, she told Judy Woodruff she knew nothing about this. But in this interview today, this was my job. I was doing my job. I was trying to understand a foreign policy question. I was not being political. This is not uh, anything uh, political has, has been alleged. The allegation is that somehow uh, Obama administration officials uh, utilized intelligence for political purposes. That's absolutely false. She's going to get a chance to make that case now to the House and to the Senate <laughs> yes, Intelligence yes, Committees. Yes, uh, without a doubt, I want to say this before I bring you guys into the conversation. There's an easy way to go through this, a common sense way to go through this so everybody's interest can be served. Susan Rice can testify before those committees. The President of the United States could declassify with the stroke of a pen all these documents we're talking about so she could say, explain what she did and be questioned on it and the American people could find out what's actually in the documents to see if it is anything nefarious or the like of that. Can we just take a step back? And remember, what was it, two weeks ago that Devin Nunes started this whole bizarre subplot that right. is now becoming more of a main storyline uh, about the unmasking, going to the, getting information from a source, going to the White House, and it turns out that the White House was the source. I mean, all of that. But what does it mean? It right. means that as crazy as that sounded, as crazy as that looked, now you have the former Obama 
NS, NSC what? director on television having to defend herself. And that's what, understandably, we're all talking about. That's what the, yeah. So that, that's exactly that, what the Republicans that, in Congress and most importantly the White House, the that, president on down, wanted. Yeah. They, they wanted us to be talking about this and not what we were talking about earlier, the Carter Page questions and others about the Trump administration uh, or uh, then campaign or uh, then businesses ties to Russia. But, but there are 24 hours in a day and there are 12 months in a year and so if this yeah. was just a smoke screen. I'm not saying we yeah, shouldn't talk yeah. about if it. If this is just, if, if this is, if she did, if anybody in the Obama administration did anything wrong in unmasking and did played any politics, they should be exposed for that. However, again, back to my previous conversation about Syria, we can walk and chew gum. Uh, we can continue the investigation of the Russia interest too, which is what the president's trying to distract us about. But just parenthetically, the, the unmasking itself can be entirely proper. The surveillance can be entirely proper. The problem is that the unmasking is sort of a step towards the leaks exactly. and the White House quite understandably is pointing to leaks of what we all right. think are, are class is classified information about Michael Flynn. Right. Well let's take our time and investigate it all. We're watching